Ah, aloha everybody, it's Hawaii Robbie. That was the most terrible introduction I think I could have ever given. What is up guys, welcome to part two of this metagame discussion. Obviously we have 30 some decks to cover, so I request that you all show me some likes on this video. It motivates me, it makes me a happy little camper, getting the chance to see the people actually want me to beat the crap out of all of these and talk about why Altergeist are terrible. So. Let's dig on into part two of this discussion, making fun of Altergeist everywhere, shall we? We're going to just start things off with Guru Control. Hey, congratulations, Guru. You made it. You're doing better than Altergeist are at this point in time. So I don't know if you guys kind of noticed anything in this format, but... If Denko Seka comes down and you're a sub terror player, you're not totally lost because your deck plays an abnormally large amount of hand traps. And by an abnormally large amount, I mean you packing, my guy. Like, congratulations. I've never been more impressed by size in my life until I saw what that sub terror player was packing in his main deck. The fact that you get to play so many hand traps, it's it's absurd. You know, when you have an in-house hand trap, you would think Noble Knights would be doing better because they have an in-house hand trap too, but that's just not working out for them. But being able to kind of misplay a hand trap and get rewarded, also the fact that Guru can flip himself back face down with another card like, hmm, your deck's doing kind of good. A little bit better than I think you thought it was going to do at this stage. And I, I will say that Guru Control isn't good enough to win a YCS. It's good enough to make it to top cut, and I, I kind of thought it wasn't going to make it past top 32, but the last one we had was top 8. If you're going to a regional level, be aware that Guru Control is going to exist. I don't really think Guru Control is a locals level deck. Um, it's kind of strange to say that, because uh, you do want to play against a lot of rogue. I think your best matchups are rogue, and obviously Danger Thunder kind of just walks into all your back row, and you can play Summon Limit, which just outright messes up a good chunk of the metagame in and on its own. Plus, I mean, in-house hand trap, hmm, deck's kind of really good right now. And you have a lot more going for it than our friends in the Altergeist Club. But yes, Guru Control, I'm very happy to see that you're sitting at the dinner table. And you didn't get power crept, unlike our friends at the Fluffle Department. <sighs> That'll be a great discussion for another day. Why are Fluffles not tier zero? Hmm, some good copy pasta. Next up on our list of things to talk about is Altergeist. That's right, every Altergeist player. I don't know why you didn't sell your deck and build Subterror, because it's proven right now that Subterror is the better build. Now, couple things with this. We really went out of a spell format. All right, Secret Village was a good card, and we definitely saw that it was good. And unfortunately, Thunder evolved. Um, two of things, two of these things are kind of why Altergeist was doing good. When you can have a format where you can just blank out Sky Striker, and when you have the ability to shut off spells that you know most other players wanted, and you could bounce back Thunder Dragons. Oh, you were great. But we've reached a level now that neither of these things apply. And setting five back row, I mean, the, the danger decks just don't give a shit about that right now. Also, the fact that Solid is slightly more consistent than Altergeist. An Altergeist board just gets literally wrecked on by a Solid player, and it's kind of crazy because that Icarus attack being able to clear off, you go to resolve your multi faker, you get roared, you're like, what do I do? You know, unfortunately, the scaling in the format, we just have better cards and better decks now that the strategies that your deck were trying to present in the format, they're just not as relevant as they once were. And it's it's really sad to say that because Altergeist, as slow as they were, they did force the tempo of the format to slow down. But now that the scaling of the format has power crept so hard, it's just that ending board isn't so great and Secret Village isn't the best thing ever anymore. So maybe in the future... We could see a return of Altergeist, but the format needs to slow down, or we need something to, I guess, make the format fair again for Altergeist to come back as a whole, because as it stands right now, that deck just isn't going to get any more love. So, sorry Altergeist players, I know you guys don't want to hear that, and it sucks to have to tell you that, but it's not a good time for you. Next up on this list is Trickstar. Congratulations, Reincarnation. You're not as broken as you once were. Now, obviously, um, local level Trickstar are going to be fan-fucking-tastic 
being able to droll manipulate your opponent's hand on a search, um, you would think Trickstar would be a lot better than it actually is right now, but winning those critical dice rolls are honestly what makes the deck good, and I, I kind of don't want to take it away from it, but in a dice roll format like this, your deck becomes more and more dependent on you know resolving said dice rolls. Now if you resolve those dice rolls and you're able to capitalize set proper reincarnations, resolve licorices and things like that, you'll get places. But the deck's power scaling for this current point in time, it's just not what it once was. Like, it's it's kind of sad. I, I really want Trick Stars to exist, and at the same time I don't, because Reincarnation Droll is dumb, but once again, you have to draw said cards, you have to make sure that you can resolve said cards, um, but once again, you are you have a lot of hand traps. Droll and Lockbird, Ash, Effect Failure, Ghost Ogre, all things that Trick Star players have at their disposal at the current point in time. Now, depending on if you can appropriately use those without bricking, and I mean, <clears throat> the Trickstar matchup for Salad is pretty trash, too. Literally, once Salad establishes a board, uh, it is really hard for Trickstar to kind of break that, actually, thinking about it. Like, the Icarus Attack and the Roar are both really powerful cards. Uh, ugh. Actually, yeah. Salad's probably the reason that uh, we see Trickstar being gatekeepered at the moment. But yeah, the deck can still compete on a regional level. Oh, hell yes, it can. And I expect to see some tops, but YCS level... It's, it's, it'll top, but ugh, the scaling has gotten hit. Now, next up on this list is Infernoid. Now, nobody thought that we were going to see Infernoid succeed. Not even I. I kind of forgot about the deck. But one lucky, well, one duelist built a 60-card deck, put Trap Tricks in the deck, and showed us that you can bubble a YCS going 9-3. And it's really sad to see that this deck bubbled. I really wish that it wouldn't have got a, the chance to make it in a top cut, because I think a lot more people would have recognized the balance of the deck. But Void Imagination is really good right now. Dropping off 6 from the the deck, loading up for Deviati and Anaku, and being able to bum rush your opponent, oh, that is so good. It's actually insane. And... I don't know. I think overall Artifact Sanctum got a lot better, and the fact that Infernoids were kind of playing as a stun deck to kind of having access to that, this duel has changed the way that we look at this deck. And it's, once again, it's not a bad thing. Innovation at its finest, and that's what we want to see in a format like this, where new ideas are spreading, people are challenging the mentalities of things that we kind of thought to be new, and change the landscape. And Maybe playing Infernoid as a stun deck was the right way to go. I'm not going to discredit it or anything. Maybe future iterations of this deck will have learned from what this duelist was trying to do and go, oh yeah, that's a really great idea. Let's try this. So Infernoid has changed the entire way we're going. I don't know if this build will function on a regional level. Um, YCS level, it seemed to have done correct because it had the element of surprise. I think a lot of people really forget that the element of surprise is what will win you a lot of your games. So I will say, as for surprise, oh god, Infernoid, you did it. You you shook the world, you changed the landscape, and now I'm kind of scared knowing that somebody might play that deck. Now last up on this video is Crusadia Guard Dragon. Now Crusadia Guard Dragon is still very much a threat. This deck has not disappeared whatsoever. It got a lot less <clears throat> good, I think is the right phrasing for this. Because in the long run, more hand traps are present in the format, and kind of what your Guard Dragon engine wants to do isn't so great anymore. But, 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 if you go through an entire day, especially on a regional level, and you are able to set up these hot red dragon art chains, setting up these near unbreakable boards, I mean, Sphere Mode has definitely made his way into the format. I think, oh, there was so much Fear Mode in side decks this weekend. People... People knew that Guard Dragon Crusadia was going to be represented. People knew that the deck was going to be a scary mess to deal with. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I still think that you need to be siding for Guard Dragon Crusadia. Now, obviously, things like Droll and Lockbird hinder the deck. It really does hurt what it can do. But I will say this. If you're a Guard Dragon Crusadia player right now, you need to be winning those critical dice rolls um, because Salad will mess you up. And it's really crazy. Once again, 
the Roar and the Icarus attack. Timing these correct on activation will just disrupt your entire opponent, and the whole strategy that your opponent's trying to set up just falls apart. It's it's sad, but Salad really did back a lot of the format into a corner, and it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's going to be the copy pasta for this video. Why is this deck not good? Going first board against Salad. If this deck does win the dice roll, though, oh my god, it does wonders. Assuming that, you know, it, it gets to go uninterrupted and things like that. So, Card Dragon Crusadia is still very much alive. So guys, what do you think about this video? Do you agree with what I've said about these decks? Please, leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear what you guys think about these. And, well, I look forward to doing part three if we get some likes on this video. All right, guys, I'm out. Peace. The ride never, well, truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a truffle shuffle and all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancol40 for some awesome banger content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.